Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this broadcast. Mark DeJesus here. I am your brother from another mother, helping you to experience healing and freedom in your life and your journey, especially when it comes to mental, emotional, and relationship health. Today, I want to talk about letting go and learning to let go. And for so many of us in our journey, we are needing to learn to let go of some stuff that is difficult in our life and in our journey, but it is something that is very necessary. You have to develop your letting go muscle if you want to experience the fruit that is available for your life, for your journey and where you're headed. So I wanna talk about seven things that we need to learn to let go of. If the resources and materials that I'm sharing with you are a blessing to your life, go to markdehesus.com. Subscribe to our email newsletter where I will give you updates on new resources and materials and just what I'm up to and what's going on. You can also, on the website, check out our topics library by clicking on the topics button where it will lead you to an extensive library of materials all to support what you're learning and where you're at in your journey. You can also support the materials by going to the donate button and you can do a one-time donation or become a regular supporter of the ministry work. So when it comes to letting go, there are things we need to embrace as we learn and walk our healing and freedom journey. But there are things you and I need to learn to let go of. And in fact, if we don't, they get in the way of fruitful healing and fruitful growing. So each of us is gonna have to learn how to flex our letting go muscles. I'm going to talk about seven of those areas in just a moment. Now, from a biblical standpoint, Paul the Apostle talked about bearing burdens and within the context of bearing each other's burdens and helping one another out, he leaves us with this instruction. Each one shall bear his own load, meaning that you're going to have to be responsible for what's going on in your life because many times we can take on the burden of others and in a way that we're not called to, in a way that's not healthy, that word load there means freight or luggage. And for many of us, luggage, which is something that is meant to travel with you, it's meant to help your journey, becomes heavy baggage. You know, we talk about people who have baggage. Oh, that person's got baggage. Well, a lot of times... Things that we can say, oh, this is fruitful luggage, it can become baggage over time. And so we're going to have to learn to carry our own load and be aware of what are things we should carry when helping others and what are things that we should not. That's a big part of the learning journey. The book of Hebrews reminds us that each of us have to learn to lay aside every weight. So there's actually things that just weigh us down. And in that context of scripture, he talks about laying aside every, every weight and the sin. So he talks about sin issues, but he also mentions weight. These are just things that they sound nice or they sound like they're things you should carry, but they're actually becoming a weight that's holding you down in your life and in your journey. Jesus mentions in Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's a lot of us that can identify with that, right? And those of us who labor and are heavy laden, just worn down, it's a reminder that there's some stuff we need to let go of. And Jesus calls them yokes. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So we can read into this statement that there's another yoke we're carrying that we need to let go of and enter into the yoke that Jesus Christ is offering to us. And he says, I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so I find that oftentimes in letting go, we have to make an exchange. What's the yoke I'm currently carrying? Because I may need to make an exchange and take on the yoke that Christ is offering me here. You and I have yokes or luggage, you can call it, that we are to carry. These things help our journey. But they are not meant to weigh us down and burn us out. They become what God pours his grace into. When we're truly walking in the yoke that Jesus is talking about, where we are carrying luggage that equips us and helps us, 
we gain energy and empowerment to focus on what's important and the grace that is on your life. But as we go through life, there can be a tendency for luggage to accumulate. Our yoke becomes heavy. Our journey, our journey can get really weighed down. Weariness sets in, frustration, anger, even depression. So many believers are living a weighed down life. And one of the reasons is because they're carrying things they actually do not need to carry. But somehow, many think they are supposed to just keep going, doing the same thing over and over and over again. They don't consider that they may need to actually let go of the extra luggage and burdensome yokes they've been shouldering. I'll be honest, it took me a while to realize that there were things I was carrying that I actually did not need to carry. This took me time to really learn this. Nor was I called to carry it. And I could actually make a decision to let them go. This was all very empowering and very illuminating for me. But learning to let go will help us to make way for the new and what is healthy. Many of us want the new. We want healthier. We want freedom, but we don't know how to let go of the baggage, the garbage, the toxicity that we hold on to. And many times we hold on to it because it's familiar. It's all we know. And we need to invite the new, but in doing that, we got to let go. As vessels of God, there's only so much you and I are meant to carry. And many times holding on to what we need to let go of keeps us stuck and it keeps us from welcoming the new so today jesus is in the work of helping you and i to exchange yokes to let go the yoke of burden and pressure and stuff that we're not meant to carry and today i want to talk about seven yokes or pieces of luggage you can learn to let go of and today could be a day to start in that what i would say is pay attention to what sticks out for you don't just look at all seven and think you got to apply all seven today Start with just one. These are the seven yokes you can learn to let go of. The first yoke I'm going to encourage you to learn to let go of, this first one, we can all relate to this, is to let go of what people think about you. It's something that really drives our life and our journey, right? Because of our brokenness, because of the lack of love and identity security in our life, becomes an open door to have a radar for what everyone thinks about us. So it impacts how we think, it impacts how we behave, our decisions, and we lose sight of who we are. We lose sight of where we're headed in our life. We lose sight of our season and what's happening in our life. We're in constant comparison and just trying to take in, engage what everyone thinks. It's taken me a while to let it really impact my heart and life that I cannot please everyone, not nearly everyone, not even close. And so it's helped me to let go. And, it, and what I find has been very, very helpful is facing and, is, and accepting there will be people that misunderstand me, do not like me, even hate me. Hate me? How could you hate me? Yes, Jesus said, they hate me, so they're going to hate you too. So don't expect, and I think Jesus is setting the expectation that don't expect People are always going to like you. And sometimes our need to be liked drives our decisions and keeps us from making what's really needed and what we really need to do in the season of our life and our journey. It's helped me to learn to let go. The second thing I want to encourage you in is to let go of pressure. And this goes into a lot of areas. Tell me about your pressures and I will tell you your fears and how you relate to yourself. And today's a day to relate to yourself in a new way. Because many of you live under the pressure to perform, to be something for people, to be perfect, to have things just right. You're so hard on yourself. There's a pressure about the mistakes of your past. There's a pressure about things in the future. And what it does, it keeps you from enjoying anything and it keeps you from being present in the moment. And a lot of it stems from you being hard on yourself. And today's a day to look at yourself and say, I'm not going to live this way and keep putting myself under pressure. Pressure will steal the enjoyment of things that you even like doing. But when it comes under the stress of pressure, joy leaves. And today's a day to begin to take your joy back and say, God's not under pressure. He's not trying to put pressure on me. So therefore, 
I'm not going to live with that as an influence in my life anymore. And I'm going to give myself room to practice living without pressure. The third thing I want to mention is we need to learn to let go of being afraid to fail. As sons and daughters, our life and our journey is not about failure. I even put that word in quotes there because we see making mistakes as failure. We see sins of our past and sin struggles as failure. We see decisions that didn't work out as failure. I'm sorry, but in this relationship with God in Jesus Christ, it's not about failure. It's about learning. It's about learning if we let ourselves learn. Do you let yourself learn or are you always focused on making sure you do everything right and perfect and you're tormented? That shame and that fear, it keeps us from stepping out, right? We, we stay in procrastination and hesitancy because we're so afraid to fail when actually there's learning in those areas. Some of my greatest learning has been in areas that could be seen as failures, but I grew incredibly through those seasons. So I welcome it. The fourth thing is false responsibility. This is taking responsibility for things that's not yours to carry. And as sons and daughters learning to heal, learning what is healthy and not healthy, part of the process is learning to get clear on what's yours to carry. Part of this means getting rid of codependency and the enmeshment that we carry in our lives. It means that we got to stop carrying people's burdens that they are not carrying themselves. They want you to do it all for them relationships that you keep trying to forcefully change. You're carrying burdens of responsibility. You're trying to be something for people. You're trying to be something for them. And you spend too much energy trying to change someone, trying to convince. And people will put burdens on you. Trust me, if you don't have a boundary of yes and no, other people will put stuff on you and your life very easily. One of the things that's helped me is that in helping and supporting people, I cannot want their freedom more than they do. And there's so many of us out of our guilt and brokenness, we carry responsibility for others in a way that's false responsibility. It's actually false burden bearing, and it's time to let go. I also want to encourage you, number five, to learn to let go of control. Control is rooted in fear. When I look at your fears and I look at anxieties, You're going to find how you often seek to feel safe through exerting a strong sense of control. You're you're trying to control all your thoughts. You're trying to control all your emotions. You're trying to control your environment. You're trying to control people around you. And what happens is a lot of anger comes out of you. It's creating a heavy yoke in your life that you're not called to carry. Perfectionists and those who struggle with obsessive compulsive tendencies, you're going to have to recognize your control issues. Number five is cares. What is a care? A care is a place of vulnerable concern, right? It's an area that it's tied into my heart. It's something I value, but it can become a place that fear will want to grab and put a hold on it. And then it becomes dictated by fear. This is why it's so important to take heed of the exhortation given by Peter. And I appreciate his words because he told us to cast all your care upon him. Why? Because God cares for you. He has loving delight. He sees you and he's wanting you to take those cares and cast it upon him. And I learn in letting go. I learn to actually practice the experience of being under the care of my father. When I keep holding and holding and holding and and many times these cares become place of rumination. We're spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning, trying to control it, trying to solve it. And many times what I need to do is actually learn to emotionally go, God, I give this to you, knowing that you're caring for me. I'm mindful of it. I'm aware of it. But the pressure's off because I'm casting the care of it upon you. And so now I get to walk this journey without it being baggage on my heart and life. The last one that I want to encourage is number seven expectations that didn't work out. You and I, all of us, are going to have to learn at many, many areas in our journey. Stuff just didn't work out the way we expected. Expectation is our hope, right? What we think the future is going to look like. And we often add a lot of details and frameworks to the vision of what we think it's supposed to look like or what it's going to look like. And we experience disappointment. 
And so these are, you know, these disappointments, they're, they're appointments that didn't happen. We got dissed on an appointment. And so I've learned that these are areas that we need to let our hearts process through to grieve. A lot of this can lead to deep heartache. Areas that get us stuck in those areas. We get stuck in the beliefs of what we think God did or did not do. It's just areas that our hearts need to heal because they impact our present. They impact our perspective. They can weigh us down and bog down the grace of what God's doing in our current moment. What do you need to grieve through? What do you need to allow your heart to grieve through disappointments and pains and things that didn't happen the way you expected? We're going to have to be people that learn how to actually grieve, to acknowledge what happened, process through them. Like I talk about many of my videos, processing through emotions. I have resources on grieving and emotions you can check out to learn. How do we navigate through that so that we can allow what happened to us to not work against us, but it actually become assets in our journey, meaning it becomes areas of healthy luggage. These are equipping things that what you've been through isn't just working against you or becomes part of your story where you actually become empowered because you grieve through it. Weeping happens for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Now, that's not just a 24-hour thing. You have seasons of grieving that you go through in certain areas of your life and your journey. So when you think about these yokes, when you think about these areas, these seven things that you can let go of, which is the one that sticks out the most for you? They say, you know what? I need to put that to practice in my life and in my journey. I pray that this has been a blessing to your life and for those that you are being a support to in their journey. I pray that this will help bring some clarity. If you've loved this, if it's been a blessing, please let me know. Go to marktasius.com and please subscribe and check out all the wonderful, amazing resources that are there to bless your life. So be loved. The Father loves you and the grace of Jesus Christ is available to you today. So I'm learning to let go and I want to invite you to do the same with me. So let's do it. Let's encourage each other and edify each other as we're all learning to walk this and live it out. So I'll see you again, Lord willing. And the creek don't rise, but this is your brother from another mother saying, I'm out.